I do have a a uh, organization that I belong to, the Toastmaster Club, and yep. I've been there for two years. I feel like that group, you know, they they starting to um to refer me mm -hmm. to either to their relative or their or their like they going to buy a property themselves or sell yeah. a property and move out the area. So slowly, right. I mean, I see people approach me to ask me about my real estate service. Right. The okay. Club. Okay. So I'm gonna. I'm going to pull something out of my wallet here. Bear with me. i got to pull this card out. I don't want to run over to my backpack. I'm going to pull it out here. I have a whole section, and I, I did this 10-part, uh, 12-part uh, networking course, and there's a whole hour on the types of groups to go to to get referrals, and Toastmasters and Toastmasters and Rotary are on the bottom of the list. Oh. Technically, you're there, technically, you're there to learn how to – to learn how to communicate, learn how to speak, not to sell to and network with the other members. It's it happens, but that's that's not the primary purpose of being there. Primary purpose of being there is learning how to communicate and and not say a lot of ums and all that stuff. Um, that's right. So, but I'm going to teach you some wording that's going to help you even when you're there. But that shouldn't be the goal of being there. Um, so I'm going to show you this card. Can you read that? What it says? It says wealth consultant and land banker. So I help people invest in land. That's the other half of my life. It's my wife's business, but I I brought in in the last nine years. I think we've done around give or take 540 real estate transactions in the last nine years. It's a lot. <clears throat> it's a lot. What's on the back of the card is what I'm going to talk to you about. You don't have to read it. I'm going to go over it with you in detail, but they're word for word quotes. And I'm going to go into great detail on what it is. I just want to show you the back of my card has made me millions of dollars. And I'm going to go over what the wording is. It's not that it's on the card. It's the words that are on the card. Okay. So let me, let me look at my notes again real quick that I just took. And then I just want to get my mind right here. Yeah, the, the one about when you meet people at networking events, I have a whole hour-long module on that. That would take our entire, just to tell you what to do and say at a networking event would take longer than we have today. <laughs> um, friends and family mailings. So let me, I'm going to go over a module with you in a course I just created, and then I'm going to go after the mailings, and I'm going to go after the wording. Because if I tell you some of the wordings that I would change on your mailing before I show you this, it's going to be confusing. <clears throat> so I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to open this up. I'm doing, I'm clicking all kinds of buttons you can't see. I can see what you see in the screen, and I'm waiting for it to pop up. Have you ever had anybody come up to you and try to offer you a side business, whether it's doTERRA, Amway, whatever, they're trying to pitch a, a, a way for you to make money on the side? Yeah, all the time. People I get it all the time. And you did you so, you do it all the time? No, no, I get no, I get approached all the time. Oh yeah. So I I created a course to help people with what to say instead of saying, hey, are you looking to make a little extra money on the side? So, but inside of it is what I need to teach you. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about about me and what I've done, and then I'm gonna go into uh, some wording you can use when you meet people. The wording you can put on your mailers, and I'll kind of give you ideas of where you can put it, and then what you can say when you talk to people. Uh, I also want to go over a term, and I'm going to type it real quick just so I remember. Have you ever heard the term power partner? My face is yeah. you, okay? And then there's two sides. This side, you're using the term sphere of influence, friends, family, member, people you've met. And that's one side to get business from past clients, people you've already sold homes to or, or sold their home, you can teach them how to send your referrals. That's one half of the life. The other half that I didn't hear come up to me is the bigger half. Let me give you the definition of what a power partner is. A power partner is someone who sells to, serves and consults the same people you do, but they're not real estate agents. And you, it looks like you had an epiphany as I was speaking. That it was coming to you. Yes. Okay. So I, 
that reminds me uh, of a um, networking group that I belong to. They are in real estate, but then they also have people from, okay, so this meeting is this networking group. We meet one um, once a month in San Francisco. Yep. We have different people coming to the meeting. Uh, real yep. estate agent, yes, broker, and also lender, yep. uh, lawyer. Right. Uh, what else? Like people from, from tech company. Yep. You don't even so, need to explain. I've been running networking for 17 years. That's what I do. So, okay. So this side, I get my, it's all reversed on the camera. So this side, is you talking to power partners I'm gonna give you four or five my wife has 163 different industries I'm gonna give you four or five but what I want to do real quick is I want to give you the tool to come up with the list on your own so you see my fingers what what is this when people do this what does this mean like money so in real estate who deals with people? No, forget real estate. Me. I got a couple bucks. Who do I discuss my money with? Name the industry. Uh, financial advisor. Write it down. Write it down. <clears throat> Who else deals with my money besides a financial advisor? The bank. Banker. You got it. What else? Uh, let's see. Who else? What's April, what's April 15th? Watch. April 15th. Tax, tax advisor, tax CPA. Tax advisor, CPA, yep. Somebody's got a lot of money and they want to make sure their kids get it without going through probate. What attorney is that? Uh, well, like a uh, real estate attorney, like. Estate planning attorney. I'm getting divorced. I need to move out and buy my own home. What attorney am I working with? You moving out of your own home, so you wanna. If I if I'm getting divorced, I'm getting divorced, uh, so I need to move out and get my own home. What attorney is helping me with that? Divorce attorney. They like to be called family law, just so you know. They like to be called family law attorneys. Divorce attorney is kind of negative. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, you see those industries? Yes. Okay, that's a five or six or seven. That's money. Okay, hmm. then we look at it and we go, that's money and circumstances. Circumstances, divorced. Estate planning attorney is inheriting money. CPA looks at the money. The banker looks at the money. The financial planner looks at the money. They're having money conversations. Now, we have circumstances. If somebody's moving out of the area because they got a new job, that's mm -hmm. gonna be staffing, recruiting, outsourcing, those types of people. We have people who are going to downsize because they're empty nesters. You've heard that term, right? Where people, their kids are all off to college and gone and now they can downsize. <clears throat> We have, I'm just talking about circumstances. We have people who have child number three on the way, so they need to get a bigger home. <clears throat> That's people's circumstances. Then we have to look at the house. So if you look around, are you in your living room, it looks like? Yes. Okay, so behind you, I see some blinds. So. Right. What I tell real estate agents, and it sounds crazy, but if you put me in this house that I'm in, this is my opinion, and some real estate agents think I'm crazy, and that's fine. I don't care what they think anyway. But if I'm a, if if you, Cam, you put me in this house, this is my opinion. I move, maybe I move 50 miles away. This is my opinion. That's your responsibility to introduce me to the guy that's going to mow my lawn. That's your responsibility. You put me in this house. If I need this ugly green wall painted, you should be providing the painter, the handyman, the roofer, where I'm, where my new chiropractor is. I don't have any hair, but my hair, my wife would need a hairstylist. 
nails, makeup, chiropractor, anything in that local area, it my opinion is your responsibility to refer that to me. We're doing two things with that. Anyone, anybody can sell me a home. Where you differentiate yourself is when you start introducing me to these other professionals, why would I go anywhere else? Anything I need, I just call Tam. I need somebody to come and fix my dishwasher, I contact you. I contact you for everything. You're the only person I go to for everything I need. On one side of my life, I'm the guy that contacts you for everything. If any of my friends or family members ever see they need a real estate agent, how in the hell would I ever refer anybody besides you? Because you know everybody. That's one half. Now, the handyman, the roofer, the painter, <clears throat> if that painter, let me, let me kind of teach you how I would teach. Just, I'm going to go like, digress a little bit. This is how I would coach people if I was a real estate agent. And you're the painter, Tam. Okay. I would say, hey, Tam. Uh, I've got a client that needs needs some painting done. They just moved in. Now, there's probably circumstances where maybe you walk into someone's home and they say, hey, after we do this, we fix this and we do all these repairs, we're going to put our house on the market, but we need we need your help first. The reason why I'm looking over here, Tam, is because your picture, I'm looking at your face over here, but I know the camera is where I'm actually looking at you, but I'm looking all over. Sorry. So... I know, Tam, you'll go into someone's home and sometimes they'll say, hey, we're going to paint this, we're going to paint that, and when we're all done, we're going to list the house. Tam, if you hear that, I'd love it if you would give them my card, and I'll be giving your card to people when I move them in and they want to do repairs. Would that be fair? Could we talk about how we could build a referral partnership that way? That's mm -hmm. what I've done. I've had over 6,000 6, one-on-one coffee meetings. That's how many I've had. Now, no, no, coffee meetings don't work. I'm doing one right now, Tam, because here's my coffee. <laughs> I'm doing coffee meetings right now because this is going to lift. We're not going to be in our houses for the rest of our lives. Maybe <laughs> two or three or four more weeks. But this is the time to build this and then explode when we get out there. Did, did that resonate with you? If you bring up a house painter in, now you've pleasing the client, but you're also getting the house painter to refer people to you when they go into a home and the person paints the home and then lists it. Do you see that that vision? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's what I teach. Now, if you don't like that, we might as well end now. If you want to hear more, I'll, 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 I'm going to go much deeper on what to do and what to say. But people who want to door knock or just do mailings, I can't. I, I The only thing I can help you with that is the scripting of what to say when they're door knocking and the words to put on the mailer which what I'm about to show you will be good for both. But building a network and networking is not this side. Talking to your friends and family members, too small. Because your friends and family members might know one person every five years that are going to move. But those industries, look down at that piece of paper where the, you just wrote those industries down. The financial planner, the CPA, the estate planning attorney, the divorce attorney, they're working with people weekly who mention i have money i'm renting i don't know what i could afford it's time to buy a rental property i just inherited money i just got a big bonus check they're having those conversations every day it's your job to get in front of those professionals and teach them how to send you referrals but you better be doing it in return okay mm -hmm. that was a mouthful let me get a sip of water here coffee Now, <clears throat> I'm going to talk again nonstop for about the next 30 minutes, and you're going to be doing a lot of yeses and nos, and hopefully this is recording, and but still take some notes. But I'm going to give you 17 years of my life in a half an hour, and I want you to know that I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to – I'm just going to let you know I, this is what I do for a living, one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have two different courses on networking. One's 395 bucks, one's 995 bucks. It's like 10 hours of me teaching networking. I'm not going to bring it up again. I'm not going to beg you to hire me, but I'm going to teach you as much as I can. I've hopefully you've already learned something already, but I'm going to go deep into what to say and I'm going to go quickly cuz we got about 35 minutes and I got to have lunch before I fall on the floor. <laughs>
Okay, so do you see uh, the slides changing? Do you see the slides changing? Yes. Okay, I have to tell you this before I can tell you what I'm going to show you. We're probably going to end up going about an hour and 10 minutes, probably go another 35 or 40 minutes. Uh, I work for Eastman Kodak. Mm. You don't need to read it. I'll read it to you. Plus, I'm recording this. i um, been teaching networking for 17 years. Now, after Eastman Kodak, I became a headhunter, a recruiter. So I was driving down to Cupertino, Santa Clara, um, and then to, to some startups to do staffing. And then I ended up getting hired by Cisco Systems. I got laid off in the real estate crash. I lost millions. I had stock options, all these companies. that I lost it all. And just to jump ahead real quick, I was bankrupt. I got divorced. Um, well, I lost those millions in 1998, 99 in, in the, in the, in the dot-com crash. And then I started doing the networking. And in 2008, if you remember the real estate crash, you weren't doing real estate then, but I don't know how you wouldn't know about the real estate crash in 2008. <clears throat> My house went $300,000 under, under market. As I was getting divorced in February of 2008, I did a deed of trust transfer. I handed my ex-wife my house. I rented an apartment. My, I was coaching real estate agents and mortgage lenders and running networking groups. My income went from 14,000 a month down to five, but I had to pay child support rent. I moved in with a friend of mine, lived with him, in late 2009, early 2010, he bought a home. So I had no place to live. So I was broke. That's the car that got repossessed. That's the actual car. That's not a car like it. That's the actual car. I'm waiting for it to flip on your screen, that Cadillac. I moved into this office. Do you see that picture? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a converted two offices in, a, in an old mansion in downtown Pleasanton. Mm. So these are both bedrooms that they turned into an office. That's the actual office. It had closets. I put my clothes in the closets. I put everything else I owned in storage. I slept on that futon for seven months and I showered at the gym. I was homeless. Okay, that was in 2009, 2010. I went from that to multimillionaire with what I'm going to show you. Okay. Now to back up real quick. So my wife helps people invest in land. And that's something I'd like to talk to you about another time. I think that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about when I originally talked to you on Facebook, because the partnerships that I built with real estate agents and mortgage lenders, it's staggering. I don't want to go too deep on that, but half of my life is networking. The other half is helping people invest in land. Over 6,000 coffee meetings have facilitated over 1,000 networking groups. <clears throat> if you've heard of Les Brown, I shared this stage with him a long time ago when I was broke, even though the event was called the Millionaire Marketing Seminar, and I was up there teaching networking. I didn't have a dollar in the bank, but I knew this stuff worked. I cured type 2 diabetes. I almost died uh, five years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm fitter than the one, the picture on the right, but that what I was doing is going through a very strict diet to cure type two diabetes. I did not go on medication. That's why I'm a big fan of the, um, the network marketing industry. A lot of, there's a lot of good weight loss products and stuff out there. I just don't like the way they approach people. Do you want to make some money on the side? No, <clears throat> these are multiple awards that my wife's won with her company, with the networking skills that I've taught her and that I help her with. Um, all of those awards are for making hundreds and hundreds of thousands a year. So what I want to show you now, do you see that the check on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a story behind what I'm going to show you. So I just want you to stare at the screen, okay? These are checks. The, this is not what people invested with us in land. These are the checks that I walked into Comerica Bank and deposited in my account. Okay. So there's one. <clears throat> and I, I can see when you can see it because it, it's showing me. So as soon as it shows up on your screen, I'll count to three and I'll flip. Now this last one, do you wear glasses or anything? Yeah, I'm always joking. I say if you wear glasses, they might fog up when you see this one. Oh, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about this one and then I'm going to tell you how we met this client and everything. So number one, all of those checks that I just showed you are from one client, one. I made one. all that one okay. one person, one person. Her name is Rhonda Fee. She's a real estate agent. She lives in Pleasanton, not far from me. And I have written permission to say her name and tell her story because she's actually closing her brokerage to come and sell land with us. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell you the end of the story. I'm going to tell you the beginning. I'm going to cough. <clears throat> I got al allergies are just destroying me. I got allergies really bad. So we had sold her, this lady and her mom, and I'll tell you that how they got the money, a bunch of land, and then this big one came in. She had met the owners of my wife's company. The guy's, a, I don't want to say how wealthy he is. He's unbelievably wealthy. And he's the one that provides the land. He called us up on a Friday and said, I got this monster. Call her mom on the phone. Tell her about it. It's Friday afternoon. You have until Monday 9 a.m. to sell it or I need it back. Now, in my mind, I already know how big the commission is because I'm really good at math. So we call her on the phone. She says, uh, guys, I'm too busy this weekend. I don't have time to hear about it. Just tell me where to send the check. And to God, if you don't believe me, my wife's upstairs, I'll go get her. It was two or three years later before we ever sold, her, showed her and took her down to Lancaster and Palmdale where most of the land is, which is in SoCal to show her the parcel was like three years later. That's the commission check, five minute phone call. That's what I put in. And I'm gonna tell you, there's a reason I'm telling you this, not to brag about money. I'm gonna tell you what happened. So when you have relationships with those, and, and I say look down, cause I know if you look, I think it's to your right. I saw you writing them down. So I know they're written down there, the financial planner, the estate planning attorney, all of those types of people. We had an escrow officer who did monthly classes. So now I want your mind to start thinking on first time home buyer classes, investor classes. What can you do besides just mailers? What makes this bigger for you is if someone else brings you in the room. I wanna make very clear. If you promote it, it's you. If a, if a, if a mortgage lender promotes a class and builds you up and puts you on a pedestal, those people, when you walk in are like, Look who just walked in. My mortgage lender told me to talk to this lady. Do you see how we're being evangelized by someone else? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So this lady puts 20 people in the room. She was an escrow officer. She did monthly classes. I want a land banking class. I know a lot of investors. We go there. Rhonda's in the room. <coughs> she, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. She sees the full land banking presentation. I need to meet you guys for coffee. Her grandfather had purchased land in Fremont um, in, off of Osgood. Now, in Fremont, you know they're putting in BART? Mm -hmm. BART's going to Fremont. Okay, her land is sitting, when I say next to, this was her two acres touching the parking lot of the Osgood BART station. Her grandfather bought it 40 years ago for a quarter million. They were in escrow for many, 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 many millions and they didn't know what to do with the money. She's a real estate agent and she didn't want her and her mom buying a bunch of rentals because she didn't want her mid 70s mom dealing with a bunch of rentals and they had just become unbelievably wealthy from land, so why not buy more? You're familiar with the 1031 exchange? Mm -hmm. Yes. So all of those checks are from a 1031 exchange. They sold land, bought more land. Just so you know, you can sell a rental property and buy land. You can sell land and buy rental properties. You can sell buildings and buy houses. You can sell houses and buy buildings. You can sell land and buy buildings. You can sell buildings and buy land. Land, houses, and buildings are all commercial. So they sold land in this case and bought land, but I've got investors who have sold very large buildings and bought a lot of land with us, just so you know. Now, that's, that's a strategy, and I just showed you how much I made. So that check, that check, that check, that check, and that check, and that check are for one person we met by giving a class. Your mind might want to say, hmm, because could you not give a first, yeah, 
it would only take you two or three hours to put together a for if you really worked on it, Tam, and then you got a crap load of free time right now to put down an investor class or a first time home buyer class or some kind of class on what's going on in your area. And then you have other people promote it and you could do it. You know how I know you can do it? Because you're sitting on here right now. That's how I know you can do it. It's not hard. If I can do it, if I can do it, I guarantee you can do it because I am I am not good with technology. I'm good at hugging people and shaking hands. I This is not my specialty, but I've made over a million dollars on webinars and I don't like it, but I've done it. So an idea could be classes. Now, that's as far down that road I'm going to go. I want to go now into um, wording. So let me jump ahead here. Do you see that word on the screen? The words, the reticular activating system. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Uh, you, where have you heard of it? It means that when, you, okay, you just bought a Tesla and now that you go on the street and you see Tesla everywhere. Okay, okay. reach your arms out like this. Give me a hug. Yay! <laughs> very few people, very, very few people know what you just said. If I talk to a thousand, 20 know what you just said. Nobody knows what you just said. I want you to know, no one knows what you just said. Where did you learn it? <laughs> I actually learned it from a uh, bow class with Keller Williams. Yep. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that knowledge that I've studied, just so you can see on the screen at the top two sentences, over 3000 hours on the question I just asked you about the reticular activating system. I'm gonna show you how to take that and recraft the words that you use with your SOI. I'm gonna back up so you can see me better, which is your sphere of influence and what you're gonna use on those power partners that you wrote down to your right, okay? Now, let me just explain to you how much goes into this. That little list of power partners that you have five or six, my wife has 163. My wife's had over four, thousand coffee meetings with people in those industries to build her network so it sounds easy i can help you with all this the, the crafting of all the different scripts and everything you need and how to get them to meet with you and not stand you up that's what i do what i'm teaching you now is sixty thousand foot you can either hire or you can do it i'm i'm not going to force you either way but i'm going to show you how we did it and what we did but just know there's a lot more to it than me saying hey go have coffee meetings oh way more than that <clears throat> so there is the reticular activating system it should be popping up on your screen shortly do you see it yet there it is okay so yeah. you've heard th sometimes they call it the ras the reticular activating system because so that's in your brain stem okay <clears throat> I'm losing my voice a little bit because these allergies are getting me, so I got to continually drink. Sorry about that. So, Tam, because because you said Tesla, you're gonna laugh. It should jump ahead two screens here shortly. It's gonna jump that one. And do you see the gray BMW? Okay, can you see where it says the cars in the gray BMW? Yes. Yeah, it's getting a little choppy. Hopefully, hopefully we'll. Yeah. we'll if, if we lose. If we lose each other permanently, we'll, I'll finish this off another time or just try logging back in, but hopefully we'll get through this, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you said Tesla and I have great BMW, is that funny? So the way that works, the way that works is this, and it's basically what you just said. And, and, and I'll shorten this story because you get it. I'll tell people, hey, last time you drove around how many gray bmws did you see and people will usually say i saw 10 and i say awesome the next time you go out and you do that same exact drive if i say tam to only look for gray bmws how many do you think you'll see 200. <laughs> pretty close give or take so when you weren't paying attention to it you saw 10 when you're paying attention to it you saw 200. i want you to remember that because where I'm going with this is say things one way, first number, say things another way, firing the reticular activating system, second number. And I always tell people, you decide how many 
you know, do you want this number or do you want this number? Usually people say the second number, I say, good, then this is what you need to say. So because you get it, I'm gonna blow right through that. I'm gonna blow right through this, but I do wanna ask you, what do you see on the screen? An acorn. Got it. When you plant an acorn, what kind of tree grows? An oak. You got it. How come not a lemon tree? How come not a rose bush? The seed that you plant will grow the tree accordingly. Yep. Yep. So inside of that seed, I'm gonna jump ahead real quick. <clears throat> and I can see when the screen is moving. It's definitely going slow, but it's gonna move. Do you see the tree? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. Is that tree that you just saw inside that nut? Eventually. Eventually, but inside that nut is one thing and it's called potential energy. <clears throat> and it's vibrating at a certain vibrational level that attracts, and I'm watching the screen jump. Do you see the water? There are things in that water that can create a rose bush, correct? Yeah. But there's things in that rose in that water that can grow an oak tree. If it grows an oak tree, it goes into the nut. If it grows a lemon tree, it's repelled. In the soil, there are things vibrating at a level that if they create an oak tree, they fly into the nut. If they create a pine tree, they do not. Same thing with the sun. It's all everything vibrates. If you believe in the law of attraction, everything vibrates at a certain level. Okay. You understand that? If it creates mm -hmm. a rose bush, it cannot go into that tree because the tree is genetically programmed to only become an oak tree. Now I'm going to go back to the picture of the reticular activating system that's in your brain stem. Do you see this pen? Mm -hmm. Now, are you at least in your 30s? I'm over my 30, yeah. Okay. I'm 51 and I'm old enough. Are you old enough to remember AM, FM radios? Yes. <laughs> I okay. mean, I still listen to in the in the car. There you go. So in your car, if you have AM, FM or Sirius, you have an antenna. This is it. Right. Oh, this pen is now an antenna. And I want you to, when you get this concept on the level that I'm explaining it, then the next thing I'm going to teach you is going to make you a crap ton of money. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> this is an antenna. If I tune my radio to country music, God forbid, because I hate country music, but if you tune to the country music, country music is going to go in the antenna and then the music is going to come out your car speakers, right? Mm -hmm. And then if I tune it to rock and roll, rock and roll is going to go into the antenna because I tuned it to the vibration of rock and roll. So now rock and roll is going to go through the antenna and come out to speak right or wrong. So mm -hmm. will you please agree with me so I can get through this, that if I tune this to country music and country music goes in or rock and roll goes in, then in my hand, I'm holding country music. It's right here. And if this is sitting right here and it tunes to country music, it goes inside this right or wrong. I mean, country music, it has to be in the air, right? It has to be. Yeah, I mean, Tell me, if it's not in my hand, tell me where it is. If I tune my radio station to country music and country music shows up and it's not right here where, where I can't grab it, but my hand is touching country music, then where else is it? Is it on Pluto? Is it on Mars? No, it's right here. Okay. So you can't see it though, correct? All, right. all, of, mm -hmm. all of the referrals that you could ever handle from the people you meet that you could ever handle you just need to program their mind to vibrate on Tam's radio station and all the referrals you could ever handle will come to you. Do you understand that? You cannot mm -hmm. see the radio station. It's in my hand. You cannot see the referrals. It's in my hand. Your job as a professional networker is to teach other people how to find business for you by you programming their reticular activating system and i'm going to teach you how now okay okay 
are we okay with this so far? I know it sounds crazy, but but you already you already agreed with me that we have a reticular activating system because you learned it at Keller Williams and you see all the Teslas. That's proof it's there. And when the guy said you're going to see a Tesla everywhere you go, he programmed your mind. I guarantee when you learned that and you went outside, you started seeing Teslas. Now I'm going to teach you how to program other people's minds so wherever they go and they hear anything about real estate, your face pops in their mind just like Tesla's popped in your mind. You can't deny it unless you think the guy with the Tesla story was wrong or lying. And how could he be when I know you went outside and saw Tesla's? He's not wrong. On the picture is your reticular activating system. I didn't draw that. That's on the internet. It's in your brainstem. If you didn't have it, you'd be dead. Okay. I can't prove anymore it's there, but now I'm going to prove to you what to say. And if I need to prove to you any more about this, then I'm sorry, but I'm going to teach you anyway because there's nothing else I can do. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I agree with you about the radio. It's it's like it's a lot of noises around here, like the radio frequency. We're not in the same frequency, so we don't hear it. Correct. Yeah, if you had, if your reticular activating system could ride the same frequency as AM, FM radio, the country music be in your ear and you, you want to kill yourself, but that's how it would be. It's a, it's a, it's a frequency receiver, just like the radio antenna, except we're picking up the frequencies of human beings. Have you ever in your life ever stood near someone or walked by somebody and go, this guy's putting off a weird vibe. I don't like being around it. There's something about this person I do not like. Has that ever happened? Yeah. Okay. Do you see the vibe or do you feel the vibe? Mm -hmm. You feel it. So there are yeah, things in the world you cannot see. What's that? I say a person have the energy <laughs> level that they show, right? I mean, you, I can right. feel if somebody has a great energy or somebody right. has a low right. energy or, you know, right. Right, that I want to get away from them. Yes. So that is something you cannot see, but you can feel. All the referrals you ever want are out there. You just got to get good at programming people. Now, this also leads into, I'm going to digress just for a second to your issue about going to networking events. You got to use this energy intuition. Um, and I tell people to be very picky. I fire more people than I work with. Um, those 10 women, oh, I'm sorry, eight women and two men who are the first 10 to respond to this coaching. The first one stood me up. She didn't get on. I waited for 15 minutes. I confirmed with her the night before. I confirmed with her an hour before, and she didn't get on. Six hours later on Facebook, she sent me a message. Rick, this coronavirus has me out of my mind. I haven't been reading my emails, and I didn't look at my calendar. Um, can we reschedule? No. No. Not for free. Um, so... If I met that person face to face, I probably would have never offered the free coaching because um, after 6,000 coffee meetings, I, re I can read people pretty well. Um, so that's one of the big things. It's practice. You have to trust that feeling. And if you're chasing money, then you're chasing the wrong thing because you'll meet people. I'm sure I mean, I've done this in the past. You've probably done it. Everybody's done it where. We've done a deal and and it fell apart right at the end. And you go the whole time you go, I knew this guy was gonna back out. I knew I knew this guy was gonna come. I knew something at the end this guy was gonna hit me with unreasonable. He was gonna ask me for a discount, he was gonna ask me to lower, but he waited for the last. I knew it. As that's happened to you, I'm sure. Where you go, I knew it. Well, that same thing when you meet somebody in a networking event, I'm basing on a handshake the eye contact I'm getting, the vibe I'm getting, and I'm fine. I'm trying to find any reason for me to not work with you. And if I cannot find the reason, then I'm going to work with you. I'm trying to figure out how it won't work. I don't care how it will work because there could be 99 reasons why it'll work. And the one reason it won't is the reason the deal's going to fall apart or your power partner relationship's going to fall apart. So meeting with people to show up late, if they're not responsive with their emails, there's a chance they're going to do that to your clients. You might want to find another mortgage lender or whatever. So 
that was that digression. <clears throat> You're going to get good at it by doing it and trusting that feeling. My God, I, the, the, I, when I'm standing near this guy or girl, woman, male or female, when I'm with them, I smile. And this, uh, this other person, I'm with them in there. There's just something about this. I don't know if he's got problems at home. I don't know what it is, but they're just, don't talk to them anymore. <clears throat> Why? Do you know how many financial planners and mortgage lenders and roofers and painters and estate planning attorneys are in freaking San Jose, even compared to where I live? There's thousands mm. and thousands and thousands just in your city. So find reasons mm -hmm. to not work with them. You want to build your life where it's an honor for someone to become your referral partner. Mm. I make it very hard for people to get in my sphere. Sphere, very hard. <clears throat> okay. I know this is resonating with you because you're smiling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to work, pardon my French, nobody wants to work with a shithead. So that, but when people break that, that internal feeling or rule is when they're chasing money. <clears throat> There's other people who just do shady things to make a dollar. And um, that's not who we want to be because you're not going to build a long, uh, fulfilling career that way. So, so I want to talk to you real quick and I'm going to send you a video link. Um, let me make a note here. I'm going to send you a link <clears throat> so you can craft your elevator speech and send it to me and I'll help you work on it. But I want to give you foundationally what to say and why. Okay. And then we'll, we'll be done for today. So do you see the screen where it says what not to say? Mm -hmm. now, now this is built out for network marketers, but the wording, all I get to do is change a couple words and it's going to be for you in real estate. Now I'm going to be very clear. This is what not to say. This is, remember I was talking about the radio station? The uh -huh. antenna, I got a spoon now because I'm in my kitchen. That antenna, okay. So if I tune it to a specific radio station, it plays, right? Now, if I took the AM FM tuner and just started doing this back and forth with the, and on all radio stations, back and forth, would, would music ever play if I was changing channels like this on an AM FM radio? No. You get noise. Right? So when you use certain wording and you don't fire the reticular activating system, you don't get a radio station, you don't get referrals. Um. But when you put it on the right radio station and you program their mind for that individual thing, then you get the radio station, you get referrals. So the biggest mistake you can make in real estate <clears throat> is if I ask you what you do, bear with me, let me check something real quick. If I ask you what you do and you say I'm a real estate agent and a good client for me is anybody who needs a home. That does not, because the word anybody is too vague. It's not laser specific. Um, perfect client for you, anybody who needs to buy or sell in the next 60 to 90 days, that's the radio station doing this. It's too vague. You might get something, but not. Okay, always remember when I go back to you didn't think about the Teslas and you saw five and then you thought about the Teslas and you saw 70. So I'll always use the term first number or second number, which do you want? First number, vague, anybody who needs a home. Second number, laser specific to fire into the antenna. So I'm gonna show you the wrong and then I'm gonna show you the right. So on the screen, we can convert any of these <clears throat> to wrong. So, and I don't want to use you an example because you might have used some of these and I'm not looking to embarrass anyone, but I promise you there are real estate agents saying these types of things. These are the wrong things. So I don't want you to memorize these. I just want you to hear them. Okay. So, hey, are you looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days? Hey, do you know anybody who's interested in buying or selling? Hey, do you know anybody who's renting? Have you heard those types of things before? Mm -hmm. How could you not, right? You just said, because people haven't been through this training. Um, <laughs> it's, hey, hey, do you know someone? Or, hey, are you? So a lot of times people go to networking events, they'll walk up to somebody and go, 
hey, are you, I'm a real estate agent. Are you looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days? They want to run from you so quick. Ah! <laughs> or you'll have people from certain network marketing companies or certain other companies say, um, do you have children? I do. How old are they? My daughter is 10. My son is eight. Oh, cool. So mine are 17, almost 18 and 15. So um, let me ask you, are you married? I am single. I used okay. to be married. Okay. okay. So now you're a single parent. Yes. Have you thought what you, what I'm doing, damn, without, without taking you too far down the road, someone someday is going to walk up to you and go, oh, so you have kids and they're that age. Oh, wow. Um, have you thought what would happen to you? What would happen to your kids if something happened to you? What am I trying to sell you? Live insurance. I love you. You, cause you get it. You get it. <laughs> Give me another hug. That's another hug. <laughs> <clears throat> so if you walk up to everyone you meet and say, Hey, I'm a real estate agent. Are you looking to buy or sell a home in the, in the next 30 to 60 to 90 days? Guess what? You just became that person. We don't want to be that person because people, and I'm going to back up to show you. Oops, it's over. Let's see. Do you see the six foot puke factor? People mm -hmm. in a lot of direct sales companies and even a lot of real estate agents are, are taught the puke factor. Anybody who's within six feet of you, walk up to them and tell them what you do and ask them if they want the product or service or the opportunity. Ah! The next time they see you coming, they're going to run. We don't want to be that person. So let me go back down to, and the best part about it is I know all these things have happened to you. That's why you knew I was trying to sell you life insurance. Because it's happened. <laughs> now, I'm, there's nothing wrong with life insurance. I've trained a gazillion life insurance agents, but I haven't trained one to walk up to somebody and go, hey, do you have kids? Oh, you have a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old? Have you thought what would happen to them if something happened to you? No. No, because then the next time I see that guy coming, I'm going to run. So that's enough about what not to say. In real estate, it's basically, hey, do you know anybody looking to buy or sell? Or, hey, are you interested in looking to buy or sell in the next 30? <clears throat> that's the radio station doing this, and it's never going to tune into anything. Because when you're talking to somebody, the only thing they're thinking is how to get away from you. They're definitely not thinking about doing business with you or sending you referrals to trying to get away. So when networking doesn't work for people, a lot of times it's because they think they're networking and they're actually trying to sell to everyone they meet. And that's not a networker, that's a salesperson. And there's nothing wrong with selling, but there's a time to do it and a time not to do it. I'm going to send you the elevator links so you don't have to memorize any of this. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to read to you. That is my, I got to make it straight. That's my land investing card, okay? On the back, right there. The back of this card, let me, let me do it this way. The back of my card has made me a few million dollars. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you the back of my card, and I'm going to give you some ideas on things you could say. The elevator speech training will go into unbelievable detail on this, okay? On the back of my card, a good – now, I say this – to an SOI, which is a sphere of influence, your definition is a friend, family member, or someone you met in a networking event. That's an SOI. A power partner, mortgage lender, financial planner, CPA, estate planning attorney. I say this to no matter who I'm talking to because I don't want to sell to anybody. I want to empower them to send me referrals. And ultimately, those people I'm talking to, a lot of them will hire me, but I'm not going to directly smash them in the face with it. So here's the back of my card. I'm just going to read it to you. Hey, Tam, a good referral for me is a friend or family member who you hear say, and I'm reading it, I want to diversify my portfolio. The only way my 401k goes up is when I put money into it. My 401k is a 201k. I'm sick of tenants, toilets, termites, and trouble. That's the four T's. Not everybody likes having rentals. <clears throat> the stock market is too volatile. My investments are stressing me out. I need to do a 1031 exchange. I can't put enough money away to retire comfortably. Okay. 
All of those are things that we can solve with land investing. So when I meet with people, I'm programming the reticular activating system to hear things like that. Now, earlier on, when I showed you those checks, mm -hmm. all of them were for one person, five or six hundred thousand dollars. The the second one from the bottom, I'm going to show you. Can you see what that says? I need to do a 1031 exchange. Okay. She was in the seminar. She saw that, was in the process of getting ready to do it. She was an escrow on a, on a property she was selling. We meet with her and she she didn't really know she could do it until she saw that. So that alone, that one sentence on the back of this card has made me a half a million. It's made me way more than that. It made me a half a million off of one person. <clears throat> so some of the quotes that you could use and I, to, to help you with this real quick and then we're going to go. Um, the, what's your, okay, you ever see people do this with their hands? This is the perfect woman. That's what they say. They'll go perfect woman. I need you in your words to paint the picture of what a perfect client looks like for you, whether it's first time home buyer, investor, empty nester and an age range tell me what what's in a perfect world what would you like to have more of and please if you say anybody i'm going to end this webinar <laughs> <laughs> okay i need you to tell me what you want to work with a perfect client yes a perfect client is someone okay a yeah, a friend, a, a friend, couple. family member, or client. I'm sorry. That down. A friend, family member, or client that. Okay. And the videos I'm going to send you will go into more great detail. But a friend, family member, or client that, and then that. tell me that you want that like first time home buyer, investor. What's the type of client you want to have more of? Let's start there. Just answer that. Okay. That they going to downsize the home perfect okay pause there they're going to downsize circumstances of downsizing are <clears throat> kids are gone they're empty nesters right. that's one right um right or um they're retiring and they don't want that big house anymore so empty nester retiring um the house is just too much for them it's mm -hmm. too big perfect right what, what's the age range of people like that 65 and above. Perfect. Now, did you see where you wrote down a friend, family member, or client? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the setup, but I still want you to watch the videos because this is a very small fraction of elevator speech. Okay. okay. A perfect. Or, now I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I was about to, to say a perfect client look like or a, a family. Yep. Going. Okay to a family needs to upgrade the home perfect let's do one at a time because if we do more than one then it's the radio station back to back to the confusion we're going to do one quote at a time okay so we're going to start with a perfect client for me is a friend family member or client who is generally 55 to 75 years old or whatever number you want to put there. I don't want to pigeonhole you, it's got to be what you want, but let's just do that for now. Who's 55 to 75 years old, who says, <clears throat> let me know when you have that. Okay, I got it. We're empty nesters, we need to downsize. Mm -hmm. Our house is just simply too big to maintain anymore. We want to get a smaller house. What were the other circumstances you were telling you were telling me that they're gonna they're gonna downsize because they're empty nesters, the house is too much. Um my my health isn't what it used to be. I have a two-story home and I think I need a one-story home because I can't do the stairs anymore. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much, does that cover that? Yes. Okay. Now, what we do, and I'm not going to sit here while we do all of this because this, we're, we're, we're way over time now. But <clears throat> then, it's, then it's a perfect a referral for me as a friend or family member 
who has aging parents. And here's a little twist on it for you. Ready? Who you hear say, mm -hmm. I, my, I'm worried about my dad or my mom falling down the stairs. I really think they should mm -hmm. get a small home. Now you're listening to the children of the elderly parents complaining. Here's another one. My mom uh, isn't doing well. We need to put her in a home. We can't afford it until we sell her house. Mm. So if someone said that to their financial planner, I'm sitting with my financial planner. I go, my, my, my mom, I, I got to put my mom in a retirement home. I can't afford it. I got to sell her home. If you were networked with that financial planner, that financial planner opens up his drawer because you fired, I want you to listen closely, you fired the retailer activating system of that financial planner. When his client sat with him and said, my mom is getting old, I gotta sell her home to pay for the retirement home, that financial planner goes like this, stop. He opens up the drawer, I just dropped my card on the floor. He opens up the drawer and he pulls your card out and he says, call Tam. Now, when that client, when his financial advisor tells him to call Tam, I'm that guy. I call you on the phone and go, hey, Tam, I just sat with my financial planner. I was telling him my mom's getting older and we got to put her in a retirement home. I got to sell her house to pay for it. He told me to talk to you. Okay, Tam, when you do a mailing or you knock on a door, do those people know who you are? No, they got to get really good at no, you have don't. to get really good at being a salesperson. Okay, when can you hear me? Okay, because the camera looks like it's jumping a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm losing right, a little. The, it's got cut out. The voice got cut out. Okay, is right. it back now? So got problem. Okay, I my side looks good. Okay, it's getting better. Okay. Okay, cool. <clears throat> When you do a mailing or door knock, they don't know who you are. You better get really good at sales. When you're sitting on that couch, which this happens to me all the time, when you're sitting on that couch and either a financial planner contacts you and says, I got a client, he said he needs to sell his home, his mom's home to pay for her retirement home, and he gives you the contact information, or you get a call, I just sat with my financial planner, he told me I need to talk to you because I got to sell my mom's home and my financial planner told me to call you. I want you to be honest. Do you need to be good at sales? Very. Trust the other person, no, the you don't financial have advisor. At, you don't have to be good at sales at all. If I call you on the phone and say, my financial advisor told me to call you so you can help me sell my grandmother's home because the financial planner told me to call you. You don't need to have any sales skills. It's already done. The financial planner sold mm. you to that. That's having a network. So knocking on doors, running Facebook ads, doing mailings, these people do not know who you are. You got to do a lot of work to get them in your pipeline. When you meet with some financial planners and some CPAs and a hundred other different industries and you teach them how to find you referrals and you fire the reticular activating system, when the financial planner hears a client say, I need to sell my home. I'm moving. I'm downsizing, upsizing, empty nester. They hand them your card and then the phone starts ringing with referrals. That's the life I'd like to see you lead. Step one, it's the first step in the process is elevator speech. So I'm going to hop off now and hope this recording worked. And then I'm going to email you. If you don't get it in the next 24 hours, hit me back and I'll send you the link to the elevator speech training. I want you to watch that video and then type it and send me your elevator speech and I'll help you with that, okay? Okay. Did you All enjoy right. it? Was it good? I Yeah, so this is great. Um, thank you so much, Rick, for spending your valuable time with me. I appreciate this and I definitely want to meet you in person when this is for sure. over. For sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm going to log off. Thank you very much for getting okay. on. And um, again, if you don't hear from me in the next 24 hours, you have my permission to email me and yell at me. Okay.
<laughs> we'll see you. All right. Thank you so much. Take, bye bye. You're welcome. It's going to take me a minute to log off because I want to make sure the recording is saving before I just power everything off. But but you can feel free to go. I just want to make sure I'm I, I'm saving this recording. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Rick. Bye bye. bye, -bye.